Ladies and gentlemen, looky there, wearing a lovely hat, it's Ronnie Bennett. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I would have gone into the whole ex-wife thing, but we've done that enough already. But that sometimes people time. wonder, why is her name Bennett? And his name is Bennett. And the reason is, she had hers legally changed. <laughs> and mine is simple. It's too complicated. Don't even go there. Yeah. It's too complicated. It's, it's the one good thing you got from me. What a name! Out of the marriage, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I don't. I, I've often said I wouldn't do it now, but then I needed to. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, how are you doing? I'm okay. As we all know, uh, she has uh, cancer. Shall we just say it? We, we won't. Untreatable cancer. Untreatable cancer. Yes. Um, I hate that term. So do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I always thought everything was treatable or they could attempt to treat it. You well, know? I'm treatable in this sense. Let me just say this clearly. Is that I, every two weeks I'm taking chemotherapy and that cannot cure these cancers, which the chemotherapy last year seemed to do to some with the surgery to some degree. Mm -hmm. What this does is delay the growth of the tumors. So I have a little bit longer, healthy time before the cancer really kicks in. Yeah. So, um, you know, as long as I can tolerate the chemo, um, it gives me time that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. But, I mean, there, it, when they say it, it's inoperable, it just seems to me that everything is operable. Uh, you no, know, listen. maybe not with success, but that it's operable. Well, then why would you even attempt if you knew it well, couldn't why, be successful? Why, why wouldn't they operate on the tumors, for instance, to try and remove the tumors? Because they can't. That's all. You mean just let it go, please. It's okay, not a okay. No, I, I I don't want to I'm get not into willing it. To, I did a whole column on my blog yesterday about everybody's got a I, goddamn that's, cancer that's, cure. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about because I read that and I thought it was an amazing piece of writing, and I thought it was an important piece of writing, and I felt that it was something you had to tell people about here today, and that is that the all these people that have their so-called cancer cures who somehow because i don't know i guess they read your blog or whatever start sending you these emails touting their potions and liquids and witch incantations right and i mean you know to to my readers credit is that the ones that were sent to me via the contact link on my blog yeah these are not any names I recognize. They are not people who comment regularly that I've gotten to know right. or written me emails before. They're strangers. Mm -hmm. So they troll the web, you know, looking for people who might be desperate with cancer that would do anything. And, you know, I think that in my case, I've been pretty straight ahead about what's happened to me. You know, You're right. um, I, I hate the phrase terminal, but... That's exactly what it is. And I'm not, I don't believe in miracle cures. And the most important thing about that is that if there were miracle cures for cancer, we would all know about it. And they would some, not be secret. And there would be a new billionaire on the on the Or a whole bunch horizon. of them, yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, so, you know, I'm going with these people. One of my nurses at OHSU, I'd say she's in her early 60s. She's always been an oncology nurse, always. Wow. She's got more knowledge about cancer than anybody, you know. I mean, how many hundreds, maybe thousands of patients has she had over the years? She knows a lot. Well, how, how great a person is she? Because she it has decided to take a part of medicine, which I would consider to be very depressing. Mm-hmm. You know? Lots of people. I mean, we've gotten better and better over the years of being able to cure some kinds of cancers mm -hmm. if you get them early enough. Better than when we were young, when you and I were young. But mostly people die of cancer. Well, you know, they always talk about curing cancer. And I always said, well, th that's a kind of weird term because cancer is an overall umbrella term for a whole bunch of different diseases that mm -hmm. do approximately the same thing, but in entirely different ways. Mm -hmm. And and so how do you say you're going to cure cancer? You can't find just one thing 
that's going to cure here's them all. Here's what happened. Here's what happened, Alex. When you and I were young, in our 20s, teens, 20s. Oh, oh by the way, folks, in case you're listening, yes, we're talking about cancer. That's yeah. a good, uplifting topic that everybody no, wants me, to hear. Let me, let Go me ahead. make this Go clear. Ahead. Go ahead. When you and I were young, our te- after World War II and into our teens and our 20s, mm-hmm. what happened in that period of time is that science just went fabulously crazy and invented vaccines for just about every childhood disease that you and I were subjected to, you know, yeah. or might have died from if we'd gotten them when we were little kids. Mm-hmm. And now... Just about every childhood disease can be controlled with vaccines. I don't even want to go to the anti-vaxxers. This is not part of the discussion. Fuck today. them. But um, but everybody assumed that cancer would be next in those days. I certainly did. Most people did. And do you remember back then in the 50s, people whispered the word cancer? You didn't say it out loud. There was something you couldn't really talk about cancer. But it's certainly because of the huge success with vaccines for childhood diseases, expected cancer to be next. Well, you know, here we are 50, 60 years later, and it's not done yet. Right. And I got caught. I mean, both of my parents died of cancer. Um, and the same kind of cancer that I have, in, in the case of my father. Um, and I smoked for a lot of years. So, you know... Yeah, shit happens. Yeah, my family, my father died of, uh, what was it, pituitary tumor Mm -hmm. when he was 59. And my mother lived to be uh, over 100. Uh, Right. And uh, she survived by just being annoying. So uh, (laughs) There is that. Excuse me, one of my little side effects here is a runny nose. (laughs) Oh, okay. Uh, But, uh, you know, I mean, these people who come up with these these phony cures and then prey on people, say, like you, by writing you, and knowing somehow you have cancer. I mean, their greatest talent is well, not... Well, I haven't cur- made a secret of it online. No. You can look up cancer and my will Yeah, but, but we could say their greatest talent is is not curing cancer, but preying on people with it. You know, that well, they yeah, manage to seek me, them out. I think part of the danger is, I mean, when I see these things that come in, I know exactly what they are immediately. But that's because I've accepted what's happened to me, that many, many cancer patients are desperate. They want a few more days, some more weeks, maybe more years. Yeah, absolutely. And they're desperate for anything. And that changes how your brain works. You start to believe in things that you wouldn't otherwise. Mm -hmm. And it's a terrible, terrible thing to prey on people like that. Just yeah. and they spend all the money that they've got on these expensive. Oh well, I mean, aren't going to do anything. Look at people like Steve McQueen and, and <clears> the <throat> like that we know publicly. Who, Somebody mentioned him to me on my blog. What about Steve McQueen and cancer? Uh, if I remember correctly, he started. He went down to South America looking, chasing a cure. I see. Okay. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. among other things, uh, and there was uh, who else was there? No, there wasn't anybody else that I that I know of. Uh, Andy Kaufman dabbled a little bit in looking for cures, uh, but eventually just realized they were all phony. He went to the Philippines where these the guys who will, uh, like, uh, put their hand in your body and they'll pull out oh, this chicken, oh, that th- you know, and tell you that they've cured your cancer. Right. And and he went back thinking, well, I guess I'm cured now, and then went to see a doctor who said, no, yeah, it's just, no, you know. know. sad. It's really sad. It's, and it's sad it's because you get... Thing, and there's, I, it's, I think I said in my column yesterday that I really, really, it's, it's, I've, I've never hoped for such a thing before. But I hope there's a hell for these people. They are evil. They are despicable. They are terrible, terrible people. Yeah. And they're making themselves rich over people who are desperate. Yeah. And they don't, and, and it's all fake. And I just think it's all But fake. some people should go to your blog, which is timegoesby.net. And read what you wrote about it. You showed a lot of different uh, things that you, you know, that you knew about that people had offered you, like uh, what snake venom. No, that wasn't offered to me. But when I was looking around for things online, there's one company or person or something that claims to be able to cure cancer that uses snake venom. I mean, then now you're into faith healing, you know, and. Uh, 
Well, I mean, faith healers have a special place in hell for faith healers, too, as far as I'm concerned. You know. So, and same thing for these guys, you know? So, um, it's, I, you know, I don't know. You said it, the, the, it's just awful, and I just wanted to say something about it. So you I say the government it, closed down about 20 of them or something? There was a whole lot. No, they didn't, they didn't close them down. There's no, I, Apparently, I didn't look deeply into it because I have cancer, and I don't have a lot of time. But um, but what the FDA did two years ago was send out letters to, I think it was 14 companies for something like 50 products, 40 or 50 products that uh, they were selling that had no, um, absolutely no, can't cure cancer, but were claiming that it could prevent, treat, or cure cancer. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Wikipedia and type in something like phony cancer cures or something, they have a huge long list of more than a hundred of known phony cancer cures, either been disproved or never tested. And um, well, you you know your theory is the best. If somebody had invented a cure for cancer, they would be a millionaire by now, and everybody would be eating a pack. No, it yeah. would not be a secret. Your doctor would be using it for you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> he's in, not, oh, there's a cure out there, but we're not going to use it? Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Would you like to know why I'm wearing a hat? Well, uh, yes, I, I'm beginning to suspect why you're wearing a hat, but uh, why are you wearing a hat? I have no hair, or very close to no hair. Now, you know, this. you only started doing this chemo two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Or, or two t two t times ago, about a month ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, four, one, two, three, four. Four yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, four weeks ago, a month ago. And uh, last time you did chemo, you didn't lose your hair. Well, last year when I had chemo, it yeah. got thinner, but not so much that I couldn't have a reasonable hairstyle. Yeah. Um, this time, you know, you've heard it all your life. You've re or read it somewhere. Comes out in clumps. Somebody's talking about their their chemo and their hair came out in handfuls yeah it's exactly how it happens <laughs> the shower, washing my hair and this giant handful of hair came out i mean huge d draped down and of course the first thing you think at least if you're me is god don't drop it you'll never get it cleaned out of the drain and i kept doing it and more and more and more and more kept coming out <laughs> I knew, I had a pile on the edge of the tub, like you know, the, this this of hair this deep. I didn't think it would and, happen and that the fast. The rest of it stayed, but I had these little hanks of hair sticking out in weird places, so I just cut them all off, and I've got hair about this long. Well, don't feel bad. Look. <laughs> yeah. you know? See, I would prefer to have a smooth top like yours than this little sprouting that I have. Well, you can shave. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm betting I have another chemo session tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm betting I lose the rest of it this time. You see, time. here's what happened. The hardest part for me when I went started losing my hair was, you know, it does. I do have hair up here. If you feel there's like hair, okay. Do you, do you shave it? I shave it, but I it was it, the first time I had to shave it was an admission of something that you know that. Um, to begin with, I had a friend, he's, he's, he's gone now, Bob Schimmel, who was a comic, comedian. And I was wearing my hair so that it was down here, right? But I was losing it up here. Ben he, Franklin? Yeah, and he said, cut it short, really short. I said, why? Well, he says, that's preemptive baldness, that you look better, you know, when you cut your he's hair right. short. You, know, right. you don't have that Danny DeVito look, you know. Uh, <laughs> when you cut your hair short. So then uh, I, you know, so I started cutting it short. And of course, I was like this up there. But of course, I was keeping every inch of what I could. And finally, I just said, ah, I'll shave it. And I shaved it. Do you use an electric razor or a hand razor? I use a, uh, uh, well, for that, I use a regular hand razor because Ooh. it's too close to the head, right? You know, mm -hmm. but for the beard and everything, I use a, you know. Well, I was, I was, and for the rest of it, I use a I use a barber. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, you know, but I'm not really very upset about this. I mean, given my predicament, uh -huh. losing my hair is not a big thing yeah. at all. Yeah, I don't really care. And you know I something? A lot of hats. And tomorrow, I'm going shopping for a wig. 
Well, I don't know well, about that. Choice. I don't know about that hat with all those feathers coming out of it. I think it's kind of cute. Well, it, yeah, but on video, it kind of looks like I don't know. It's it's okay. Well, I'm not taking it off. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not asking you to. Uh, but uh, uh, here's the best part about you going bald. You're not graying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was so white there was nowhere to go. Yeah. Um it hey, it saves in shampoo. You don't have to buy shampoo anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, unfortunately I had just bought a new bottle of shampoo when this happened. <laughs> oh no. And I don't need it now. And um it's easier you don't have to spend a lot of time on your hair. Of course my poor hair cutter loses me as a client. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get a wig? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but so, sometimes a, a hat, and let me tell you, this is serious. Sometimes a hat isn't, you just don't want to wear a hat for one reason or another. Yeah. So you wear a wig. But And the reason for me not to go bald, we're accustomed to men, old men being bald, even mm -hmm. young men being bald yeah. to shave their heads. Um, and some young model type women, gorgeous women, go bald for periods of time, and that's very dramatic. But for somebody my age to go around with a bald head hanging out, the first thing people think is, oh, chemotherapy, and they don't know what to say to you. They, they get scared, and they, right. they don't know the right thing to say. So I want to avoid that. When a woman gets it young, there are many different little afflictions that can make you go bald. And so they, you know, some women who have gone bald embrace it, but they're 35, you know, or they're 30. But when you're old, there's only one reason a woman goes bald. Yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, I, I don't want to put people in that position because it's hard to have a conversation when people don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. So better better to wear the wig, right, rather than start the conversation. I don't have to wear it all the time. So I when mean, you get the I'm wig, are you going to get a gray wig or are you going to get a, a fully hair colored wig? Oh no 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 no! I want near as near to my old my regular color the color I am now as possible. Yeah. Look, I would look dumb with brown hair, you know, or something. It well, you should have saved some of that hair from the bathroom. You could take it with you to the wig store and say, "Match this." I, I want to tell you something. I have a friend yeah. who has a six-year-old daughter. Yeah. And a year, and, some little kids just awe you. They're they're just awesome. And about a year, a little over a year ago, her daughter came to her, and said that she'd heard about a girl her age and who had red hair like her. Not very many kids have red hair right. and freckles. And that she has cancer and she'd lost all her hair. And she said, Mom, I want to grow all my hair my real long so that I can have a wig made for some young girl like me. So she grew her hair and grew her hair and grew. And I've got pictures of her with hair halfway down her back. And then just this week, she snipped off all the hair, moms, and she found a wig maker who would make a wig from her daughter's hair for a young girl with cancer who needs it. Isn't that the nicest thing? That's the nicest thing. Well, there's a thing called Locks of Love that does this. I don't this. know. Well, I, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, there's, a, there's an organization called Locks of Love, no. and they right. they but, literally have people grow their hair long and people donate their hair to right. them. And, and this was not that, and that's not yeah. what's and important. And she did it on her own, which is wonderful. Yes. And, and they found a local wig maker who knows somebody, a little girl like her, who had red hair before she lost it, and now will have a wig of red hair. Well, what about, what what about, what about her friend? Did her friend die? Or, uh, Pardon me? Did it, what about her friend? Did, didn't she want... She said she had a friend who had cancer who had red hair. No, no, no. She heard about someone. Oh, who had I see. Okay. Okay. So. Wow. What a, what a wonderful, classy kid. That, I think that's just fabulous. I love you that. You know, it's a real classy kid. Wow. <laughs> Brought really up j just right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's wonderful. But uh, I, I don't know. I just, you know, it, it, it's a whole process you're going through. And I, I find it, at one, in one point, for me, depressing. Okay? And for another part of me, Revelatory and uh, a lesson. A lesson? Yeah, because you're you're teaching me how to deal with this, you know, and you're dealing with it so well, 
you know. Well, you don't see me when I'm not on. I know you, I'm sure you've got one face for the world and one face for your mirror, you know. But I'm saying that your what you're writing is so important and so revelatory for people because this is a process we're all going to go through on on some level. I mean, we may not go through it if suddenly we get hit by a car or we get that that heart attack and drop dead right there, you know. But but most of us, you say, how many? What percentage of Americans get cancer? Forty percent, did you say? About forty percent in there of the population, yeah. and and, and there are other, you know, there are other diseases which are degenerative diseases, and and you're kind of creating a roadmap for the rest of us. Let me tell you something wonderful that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, since I started this blog almost fifteen years ago, yeah, I've used a company called TypePad yeah. to publish it. Yeah. And, um, and I pay them every year for the privilege. <laughs> and uh, So uh, enough people, quite a lot of people have said, don't let this blog go away. That It's got a lot of great information in it. And I think they're right. And I think you're right about that. So last week I sat down and I sent an email because they don't take phone calls at TypePad. There, there's this wonderful seven or eight or nine, I don't know how many, people who are helpers and you do it by... Um, online, uh, an online email kind of thing. Right. Uh, and um, so I was stuck with that because I couldn't find a phone number. So I wrote to them and I explained my predicament is what I'm calling it. <laughs> and, uh, um, and I had a few questions of how could I continue this yeah. and have it be there indefinitely for people to go and look through if they want. And and figure out how I could pay for it so somebody else has, doesn't have to keep paying for it. And what would that cost? And within less than a day, I got a note. And I know it's been so many years. I know the names of all these customer helpers. You know, I know right. every one of them right. via this email thing. They wrote back and said they were going to flip it to a free account. And they were very sorry about my diagnosis, that they loved my blog and blah, blah, blah. Can you, I mean, this is a for-profit company. Now, now let me ask you, uh, uh, TypePad, do they also put it online for you, or is that something you do yourself? No, it's all, they do all the public, there's a program, you know, that the back end where I put all my stuff, and I can, I can program but, I mean, it, I but can you're, you're, schedule it to be published, and it ha- and they make it happen. So as time goes by .net, they, uh-huh. they put that online for you. Yes, there's a different company from which I okay. buy that name that I pay mm-hmm. for the name. And there's also a different company that I use to send out the email subscriptions. But TypePad publishes the whole thing, and I have a back end where I can, you know, set it up and, and okay, put in. Okay, but what I'm the, saying is is that that, yeah, that that URL is up there because of TypePad, and so that's what's going to continue. Well, no, the URL I own, it has to be paid for. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, it's not, it's any, I mean, yeah, they need the URL, but that's not the important point. So how are you going to keep the URL going? It has to be paid for. I haven't taken care of that yet. Yeah. You know, I also haven't taken care of my cremation. It's one damn phone call, and I don't know why I haven't done it. Yet. But I, I want to say this out loud. Okay. It is a lot of work to get ready to die. It is really hard, all the stuff I have to do. Well, you've always been very organizational. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd like not to spend what time I have left being organized. Yeah. But all of my household accounts and my financial accounts and my banking accounts and all that, the woman who's going to take care of everything when I die has to know all this stuff and passwords and when things get paid and what accounts they get paid from and what needs to be canceled and... I mean, it's just, I'm making a little book for her. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But that's your organizational part of you, you know. Um, Used to do the same thing for me, you know. Used to keep all the notes about who was going to be on when and, you know, things I needed to know and whatever. Well, I couldn't remember. You have to write it down, you know. I always kept it up here, but it doesn't work. It doesn't doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that, uh, that comes to us all. But um, 
it, it, it really is a, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think what you're writing is just very important. And uh, all I'm saying is that, you know, you can probably, you could probably pay for the URL for the next 10 years or something and just keep the thing up. Yeah. Well, I will get it. You know, it's on my list. I've got a list here of all these things I have to do. <laughs> yeah, but that's very nice of TypePad. So yes. everybody, if you need I to do a blog. They're, they're wonderful people. And by the way, they then also sent me from all of the helpers, all signed it, a snail mail card. Really? Yes. Yes. And, and I hope it wasn't a get well card because that doesn't exactly. No, no, no. It what? was a, it's a lovely, lovely card. And, um, and it, it just, these are just terrific people. I've never met them. I don't know what they look like. I've never seen a photograph of them. All I know them is from their yeah. helping me out when I didn't know how to do something. So as long as you've got the URL, they'll make sure that site yes. keeps going. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Terrific. Not a big thing. Because, you know, if I drop dead tomorrow, there's no GabNet anymore. It just, you know. Is GabNet your domain? It's my domain, yeah. Yeah. It is? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was like TypePad. No, no. GabNet's my own domain. Oh, okay. GabNet.net. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and, it, you know, I got more use out of it than AlexBennett.com. Uh, you know, which, which is out there, folks, if you ever want to check it out. There's nothing there, but go ahead and check it out. Hey, listen, I just looked and we've another 26 minutes have passed. And look at what we've been talking about. Not we're the, just chatterboxes, you and me. We're just chatterboxes. Uh, uh, yeah, I love these chats we have every, every uh, other week. And uh, we will continue them as long as you want to continue them. You know, as long as I can. As long as you can. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, by this time, next time, will, will you have a wig by then or? Sure, oh, absolutely. Okay, because then we can see what her wig looks like. That's right. And then decide whether she should just be wearing the hat. Anyway, <laughs> Ronnie, thank you so much. It's Ronnie You're Bennett, welcome. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. TimeGoesBy.net is her blog. Thank you, Ronnie. Bye. Bye.